Hello everybody, welcome back to Read and Reread. I am Angelia and today I'm very excited. It is my April TBR video. Now I am running a little late. I woke up this morning and I looked in YouTube and I saw all of these fresh shiny new videos, lots of tag videos, and I thought, why do I always think on Tuesday morning about how I should have filmed on Monday? So here it is, ro rolling in mid-morning Monday, I mean Tuesday, and finally getting around to shooting this video. But it will come out subsequently today on Tuesday. And before I get into all of the bounty, the fabulous bounty of books I have picked out for April, I just want to mention that I am behind on tags and I have been tagged, I think I have three now that I have been tagged over the past week or so and I really want to do them. They're really fun tags and I've even been making some notes and they're kind of planned. Well, one of them's not because it just happened this morning, but um, I'm going to get to them. I have not forgotten these tags and I do want to do them, but if you have a channel, you might, you might uh, relate to this. It's sometimes I have a block of time that's kind of planned out. Like I know there's certain videos that I'm going to do at certain times and there's sort of a map. And then other times there's just a big question mark and I'll be sitting there the night before going, when am I going to film tomorrow? What? Is there a tag I could do? So I've been in a little, uh, a little spate of time where I had uh, several things planned and I had a reason that I wanted them to come out at a certain time. And then after there's one more of those and then it's like huh so i'm really excited that i have these fun tags to do in about a week or i might be able to start them this week who knows anyway that's my big disclaimer if you've tagged me and i haven't done the tag yet that is why but i have been uh making notes i mean the tags are the tags are under construction but this is not a tag video this is the april tbr and i'm really excited to talk about the books now I've already, what is it? We've like two minutes in and I've said excited like three or four times. So let's declare a moratorium on that word and, and, and encourage Angelia to come up with some synonyms for excited. All right, here we go. All right, first of all, you probably saw my community post, my copy of James finally got here. It was released last Tuesday and I had pre-ordered it. And I don't know what exactly happened, but it did not get here until yesterday. And I was just beside myself and it finally arrived and I, I broke out in a happy dance all around the porch and the driveway. So here it is. And I'm going to start reading this next. When it didn't come last week, I had like this, um, I had like this little reading hole planned around because I, I felt like as soon as it comes, I want to read it. But then when it didn't arrive on time, I went ahead and started reading something else. So I need to finish the something else's and I don't want to rush because they're really great books that I'll talk about on Friday. And then I'll get to James, probably start James maybe tomorrow because I feel like I'm kind of near the end of both of the books I'm reading right now. So James will either be the last book of March or the first book of April. And if you have not heard about this, it is the new release by Percival Everett that I'm kind of obsessed with. I mean, this book in Percival Everett in general, but it is a retelling of the Huckleberry Finn story from the perspective of Jim, the slave, the runaway slave from that book, or his name is actually James. So I am, and I've just heard amazing things about this already. So I know it's not gonna disappoint me and I cannot wait to get started on James. We have a few events that I wanna talk about and if there is a host or a link to share i will have it in the notes so the first one is people april and this is i know that ross from scally dandling about the books is one of the hosts and i there, i think there's some more hosts and i now as i make this video i realize i did not look this up so i will definitely be linking ross's announcement video and if there are some additional hosts i will also I'll see what information I can provide, but um, I, I saw it on Roz's channel. And this is an annual event that encourages readers to read books, um, uh, well, about people. This is primarily biographies and memoirs, but there are other formats that they could take. And Roz explains this really well, and she has some really creative ideas 
for the types of books you might consider for this challenge. So please watch her video. Here's what I chose to read for People April. And you, as you may know, if you've been watching a while, I am not big on, uh, well, I, don't, I really don't read biographies at all. Hardly ever. Memoirs, somewhat but not that often and I'm really picky about them but I have one and it's been in one or two TBRs already and then I never got around to it but I really want to read it so now is the month and that is Down City by Leah Carroll a daughter's story of love memory and murder so this is a book um a woman is looking back on her childhood her mother was a photographer who was murdered by two drug dealers with mafia connections when Leah was four years old and her father, uh, who was an alcoholic with mental health um, issues, also died when she was young. And so now she is investigating as an adult what exactly happened to her mother and what what's up with this Rhode Island mafia. So it's kind of a true crime, kind of a memoir, kind of a trying to understand your parents looking back and so I am curious to find out what Leah Carroll discovers and what kind of writing style she has in this memoir. Another book that I bought recently and I haven't read at all. Now this one I'm not, I'm not planning to read the whole book, but I want to dip into these essays by Colm Toybing and I'm getting ready and waiting for his new novel that's coming out. Is it coming out? I think it's coming out in May. Long Island, which is a sequel to Brooklyn, a book that I loved a few months ago. And, um, but he has this collection of essays that I think came out last year. Let me double check. 2023. So I thought I would just sample a couple of the essays, maybe throughout this year, kind of off and on. I don't want to just sit and read essay after essay, but I thought this would be a great one to bring in for People April and just get a little flavor of his nonfiction writing now that I have read a couple of his novels and I really am uh, enjoying everything I read by Colm Toybean. So uh, he, there's a wide range of topics in this book. Let's see. He talks about his experience with um, cancer treatment, about his childhood growing up in Ireland. This, this sounds nice. Alone in Venice, a gorgeous account of Toybean's journey during the pandemic. That could be, that could be a good one. And then the other one I have chosen for People April is a double dipper and it leads into the next topic. And that is I'm Afraid of Men by Vivek Shreya. You saw this recently in a haul video. Well, oh, look how blissfully thin this is. You know how I feel about those nonfiction skinny books. This is a memoir about Vivek Shreya and her transition. And in the description, it says throughout her life, she's endured acts of cruelty and aggression for being too feminine as a boy and not feminine enough as a girl. And she is an artist. Let's see. Music, poetry, fiction, visual, art, and film. But this is her memoir of her experiences both before and after transitioning um, as a transgendered woman. And so this leads me into the next part of April's topics, and that is Trans Girl April. This is an event that encourages you to read books by transgender and non-binary authors. Doesn't have to be girls, even though it's called Trans Girl April. Uh, that was a play on the um, Hot Girl Summer thing from a couple years ago. This was a bigger event last year. This year it's kind of scaled down and I did find an announcement video from Say Heavy, which I will put in the description box, basically just encouraging everyone to read books by transgender authors. So I, I know I read some really great books last year during this event, so I wanted to uh, come back around to it this year. So I chose this book and the next one is Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Gailey. Sarah Gailey, I had just, all I had was uh, their name written down in my, in my consideration list. They are a non-binary author and I had heard books of theirs reviewed on a couple of different channels over the past year and I jotted their name down in my book as someone I wanted to investigate and then I found out that my library had several of their novels and it kind of looks like mostly adult and one or two YA and they looked 
kind of a range. I saw some that, I mean, I didn't look at them that closely, but it kind of looked like maybe horror and fantasy and pretty kind of some funky far out topics. This one especially, this was the one that was the funkiest, but it, it sounded up my alley. Up at the top it says, are you a coward or are you a librarian? And in the, in the blurb, it says, Esther is a stowaway. She's hidden herself away in the librarian's book wagon in an attempt to escape the marriage her father has arranged for her. Now I'm going to skip part of the blurb because it looks spoilery to me. But down at the bottom, it says, the future South American Southwest is full of bandits, fascists, and queer librarian spies on horseback trying to do the right thing. They will bring the fight to you. Okay, what? I have to read this. I, what? <laughs> I don't even, it just sounds so bizarre and entertaining. And on the back it says, fight the state, be a librarian. You know I have to read this. So if you've read anything by Sarah Gailey, tell me in the comments what you read and how you liked it because this just, just sounds really fun to me. So April is also National Poetry Month, at least in the U.S. I don't know if that's a, well, obviously National Poetry Month is about the nation I'm in. I don't know if there's a global April is Poetry Month kind of thing. And I know a lot of booktubers lately have been doing uh, Poetry Thursdays and I've really been enjoying those. I'm guilty of not reading a ton of poetry. I have favorite poems that I like to go back to that I have enjoyed throughout my life, but I'm not really good at reading new, new contemporary poetry. I was thinking about this when I, at the beginning of the year, when I was kind of looking at the overall year and I thought, I want to do something in April for poetry. And two things have emerged. I am going to read this book, Poetry Unbound, 50 Poems to Open Your World, by Pedreg Otwama. This book first came to my attention sometime, sometime last year. Uh, Bob the Bookerer talked about this book in one of his weekly wrap-ups and he suggested that it is a good book for someone that would suit my description. Somebody who is not particularly sure-footed in the realm of contemporary poetry. And, and then, um, just very recently, uh, about a week or two ago, Pat at Book Chat, Book Chat with Pat highlighted this poet in her weekly uh, Thursday poetry. And that video I will put below. I could not possibly find Bob's because I don't even know when it was and it was, it was within a weekly wrap up. So I will put Pat's so, because she talks about this author and his work and she mentions this book. And I was so excited. Oh, I said it. I, I was... I was pleased and elated to discover that this book is at my library, but now it's here at my house. And the format is, there'll be like a little reminisce, reminiscence, and then there'll be a poem by a contemporary poet. I, I don't know. I think they're all contemporary. I'm not really, I guess I'm going to find out. And then there's an essay where he talks about his, it, it, not a formal academic essay, but just sort of a personal reflection about his connection with that poem. And so I think this is a wonderful way to read uh, some new poetry. There's 50 of them. I'll read one or two a day. If it doesn't all fit in, into April, so be it. If I'm enjoying it, I'll keep going or, or I'll speed it up or whatever. But I'm going to begin reading it on April 1st. I don't know what this will lead to. Maybe I will start pursuing more poetry reading. This could be the, the start of a beautiful thing. And then also, because it's Poetry Month, Michael Clark and I are doing a buddy read of Locomotion by Jacqueline Woodson. If you've been on the channel for a bit, you know that um, Michael Clark and I are both were children, children's librarians and we have been reading some middle grade and young adult fiction together. And so for April, we wanted to read a book in verse, and we both love Jacqueline Woodson, so we agreed on Locomotion. And Locomotion is, it is written in verse. Here's kind of how it looks. And it is to, it's a story told by an 11-year-old boy named Lonnie, who is living in foster care. He has, he's separated from his sister who lives in a different foster home. And he has a teacher named Miss Marcus who is encouraging him 
to capture his thoughts and emotions in poetic form. And I just want to share with you Lonnie's first poem that opens the book. And if this opening poem does not make you want to read this book, I have no remedies for you. Just listen to this. The first one is called Poem Book. This whole book's a poem because every time I try to tell the whole story, my mind goes, be quiet. Only it's not my mind's voice. It's Miss Edna's over and over and over. Be quiet. I'm not a really loud kid, I swear. I'm just me. And sometimes I maybe make a little bit of noise. If I was a grown up, maybe Miss Edna wouldn't always be telling me to be quiet, but I'm 11 and maybe 11's just noisy. Maybe 12's quieter. But when Miss Edna's voice comes on, the ideas in my head go out like a candle and all you see left is this little string of smoke that disappears real quick before I even have a chance to find out what it's trying to say. So this whole book's a poem because poetry's short and this whole book's a poem because Miss Marcus says, write it down before it leaves your brain. I tell her about the smoke and she says, good Lonnie, write that. Not a whole lot of people be saying, good Lonnie to me. So I write the string of smoke thing down real fast. Miss Marcus says, we'll worry about line breaks later. Write fast, Lonnie, Miss Marcus says. And I'm thinking, yeah, I better write fast before Miss Edna's voice comes on and blows my candle idea out. I cannot wait to read this book. It's actually, it's reread, but it's been a really long time since I read it. So I, I can't wait. Just reading that first one, I wanted to just set everything aside and keep going. And I need to check and see whether Locomotion has been banned or challenged because Jacqueline Woodson has uh, been challenged frequently for her books. And I'm not sure about that one. So I will, I'll have to investigate. But a book that has been banned or challenged is The Devil's Arithmetic by Jane Yolen. And it is, it won the National Jewish Book Award. There is a young girl named Hannah who thinks that her uh, family's Jewish holidays are boring and tedious, full of old, boring stories until she time travels to the past and learns more about the Holocaust. Now, here's, here's the, the history of this buddy read is that, um, Michael was reading this book, Attack of the Black Rect Rectangles by A.S. King, who is a middle grade and young adult writer. She wrote a novel, a fictionalized version of the experience when her son was reading the, <laughs> the Devil's Arithmetic in school, in middle school, and found that their copies of the book are redacted and have things censored out. And um, then he goes to investigate why this has occurred, what is in the missing passages, and the whole experience of that with the censorship led to her writing this book. Michael read this book, then wanted to go back and reread The Devil's Arithmetic. I heard about all of this, and I thought, you know what, I'm not sure I've ever read The Devil's Arithmetic, and I know I haven't read... I know I haven't read this. So now I got, I just, I got to read these two. So this is the way my list grows and evolves. So those are also on my April list, but wait, there's more. So when I did my haul video last week, I mentioned there were two stragglers and, and one of them was James. The other one was Further Tales of the City by Armistead Maupin. And I am sort of at a very a leisurely uh, saunter reading the Tales of the City series. And there's nine, ten, I don't know. There's a lot. And this is book three. And so I guess a couple months ago I read book two. Now I'm feeling like reading book three. These books I have mentioned before, they are, they are uh, an interesting blend of goofy and touching. They are the plots, you know, the, the first couple of books take place in the 70s. I think we're moving up to maybe the beginning of the 80s here, but they are, if you watched soap operas, either the daytime ones or the nighttime ones in the late 70s, that's what the plots are like. There's the most 
bizarre, far-fetched things happen to the characters. But then at the core of it, there are these characters that you really grow to care about, um, especially Marianne and Michael and Mrs. Madrigal, and you want to find out what's going to happen. You know, is their quest for love and family and happiness going to come true? And there's some, there's some really, it, there's some fun uh, cultural and references from the time period. And so it, it's kind of, it's kind of like that. It's, it's sort of jarring when you read it because some things are so weird, even sometimes inappropriate or they are, they don't hold up well time-wise, but then other things uh, really touch your heart and, and with the characters and their friendships. So it's, it's an uneven experience, but then after a month or so, I kind of want to read another one. And so, uh, yeah, Further Tales of the City is on my list for this month. Then just two more. I'm kind of at the end of O. William, so I will later on in the month be reading the fourth book in the Lucy Barton, or they call it the Omgosh series by Elizabeth Strout, Lucy by the Sea, which came out last year. I did read it. I'm rereading the books closer together, and I'm going to talk more about them on Friday because I'm just about done with my reread of O. William, and I have some things to say about that book and about this series in general as I work my way back through it. But Lucy by the Sea is up next. This one is has a pandemic uh, backdrop. Lucy and her ex-husband, William, leave New York City uh, to ride out the pandemic in a house in Maine. Uh, last but not least, this is a spillover from March. Kate Atkinson, When Will There Be Good News? I didn't get to this. It got one-upped by Tana French last week because the hunter came in at the library. So Kate got the bump, and so I'm putting this book back in my lineup because this is another series that I'm rereading through the Jackson Brody mystery series. And both of these books that I'm rereading have new editions in the series coming up later this year. So this one is the third one. And I, it was all, I talked about it in my March TBR, but it didn't make it. So it's now in my April TBR. I have a bunch of books on my cart to fill in. If, if somehow that doesn't fill up the month, I have a lot on the side and I am working on several, um, a couple of book challenges on Storygraph, Ben Reed, you know, the one I never can say, Ben Reads Good, the Read Good Challenge. I think the one, I think that the category for April is a former winner of the Women's Prize. And I think I put in Bel Canto in that space by Ann Patchett because I've never read it. It also would count as a book by someone named Anne from the one I didn't do in January. So if I have time, I might get a hold of Bel Canto and try to read that for that challenge. And then somehow, I slipped and fell and signed up for the Montana Book Challenge because I really like the categories. And that is 30 different prompts that really hit on a lot of things that I read and have read or am planning to read. So just for fun, I joined that one too. And some of the books from this month kind of fit in. And I this just happened to me like last week. So I'm still trying to sort out and fill in the things that I might read for those prompts. Also... I will be talking about it. Maybe I'll talk about it next week, but I'm going to go to a book festival in April, the San Antonio Book Festival. There are some really great authors appearing in that book festival, and they're going to they're going to announce their actual like their final schedule this upcoming week. So I think I'm going to wait and share that and talk about it more after I've seen the list of authors, but I want to see the schedule of events and then I'll talk to you more about it. But that's coming up in April too. All right. So that is my plan. Let me know what you think about the books in my TBR and anything that you are really, really jazzed up about reading this month or exciting book events on the horizon. And uh, I am still hovering very close to my 1,000 subscribers. Um, the universe has been pranking me this week and it's been going like down a couple, up a couple, down a couple. So, I mean, who who does that? That's just heartless. 
So hopefully a few more people will discover my channel over the next week or so, and then it will be time for the traditional Q&A and celebration. But until then, I will be back on Friday for Friday Reads, and I hope you have a great reading week and just a great week in general. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.